Jeremy, you are the head writer on Moon Knight. Uh, welcome to the MCU of it all. I want to hear about the first shreds of ideas you had for this. What kind of comics did you look at? What kind of Egyptian lore and mythology did you look into and make sure that you're combining all that for what culminates into a very good show from what I've seen so far? Oh, thanks. Um, you know, right from the beginning, um, it was kind of a blank slate. This is a character people don't really know the way they know Spider-Man or Hulk or, or, or Captain America. Um, so we knew we, were, we would have the ability to introduce this character to fans for the first time. Um, and, and we also knew that, you know, I've seen a lot of shows where a guy in a cape sort of beats up muggers in an alley. And, and I was like, I had no interest in, in sort of competing with Batman. He's got an 80 year head start, he'll win. Um, and, and so I sort of came in and, and really from that first meeting, I kind of pitched basically the pilot episode that fans are gonna see next week. Um, and, I, and I really kind of came in and I, I was like, I don't wanna see this guy beating up um, muggers. I wanna see this guy in Raiders of the Lost Ark. I wanna see this guy in Ghostbusters or an 80s Amblin movie. Let's get some weirdness in the MCU. Let's get some horror. Let's get some monsters, some magic. Um, so I really came in just saying like, let's make, let's push the boundaries. Let's make this as weird and dark and cool and unique as we possibly can. Um, and Marvel was so supportive of that. I, I think, I think I started talking Raiders of the Lost Ark and Kevin's eyes lit up. I think, I think we probably were speaking the same language there. Um, so I'm, I'm just excited for fans to see that. I, I hope they dig it. And, and you, uh, you mentioned Batman. I don't know if you read Discourse Online and stuff. Moon Knight and Batman are often compared by a yeah. lot of fans. They're not very similar. What do you think of that comparison? You know, I, th I think there's... I think it's a fair comparison if you look at certain runs because there are certain times where like where like Stephen Grant was a billionaire playboy philanthropist and he's driving a moon cycle and flying a moon wing and and that version of me never appealed or that version of, of the character never appealed to me because I was like, it's too similar. And, and the one thing the MCU is great at is not kind of riding someone else's coattails. They're very good at coming in and, and having an, an original, unique take and spin. And, and so we looked at it and we said, what, what's unique about this character? It's not necessarily the grappling hook or the tool belt or the costume. It's his struggles with mental health. It's, it's his disassociative identity disorder. It's the fact that this guy's greatest enemy is kind of himself. So many of these characters are, so many great characters are sort of defined by their villain. Batman's defined by Joker, Spider-Man's defined by Green Goblin or Venom. And, and I think if you look at, at Moon Knight, his greatest enemy has always been himself. And so, and so that's the sort of story that I don't think you could tell if you were doing this as a feature film, if you had to squeeze all of this into 90 minutes. Um, but knowing that we had six hours to play with and we could really do a sort of very cool sort of deep dive character study, we, we knew we had the runway to really tell that story in a satisfying and take the audience on that journey. So, so you're gonna get to the end of that first episode and you're gonna say, that was really cool. I still have no idea what the hell is going on. Um, and that's very much by design. But, but I think by the time you get to the end of, of the mystery, um, you'll, have a, you'll know exactly what's going on. And hopefully we'll, the audience will go on the same kind of cool, incredible journey that Stephen Grant has. Now, Stephen and Mark are not the only personalities this character possesses. Uh, I know there's a certain cab driver and some other things we might uh, one day run into. Did you get to explore any of that? We talked about that a lot, and, and our sort of thought was, was um, let's kind of concentrate on, on the main two right now. Two, two is already pretty hard to balance and pretty weird, um, and, and so there's, there's definitely a few breadcrumbs in there, and there's a few Easter eggs that if you're a hardcore Moon Knight fan, I think you're going to be able to point to some stuff in the background and say, oh, they're, they're, laying, some, they're laying some groundwork that there could be some stories told in the future. But I think right now the goal was like, Let's tell a story that, that everyone can sort of follow along um, without drowning people in too much weirdness right off the bat. I dig it, dude. What episode are you most excited for everybody to see? Um, you know, I, I, I really, um, I'm, I'm really proud of the pilot episode. It's, it's kind of so close to the story that I originally pitched Kevin in a, in a room three years ago. Um, so, and... And weirdly, as much as the show changed and as many versions of the show as we did, that pilot episode always kind of stayed in one piece. Um, so I'm really proud of that. Um, and I think kind of the last two episodes of the series go to some really weird, unexpected places. Uh, and I'm really excited for people to meet some of the, the characters um, and villains that are coming up. I think it's, it's, it's going to be really fun.